Well, Kieran, we're ahead of the new season for the under-18s. So we've got a pretty decent pre-season. You must be happy as an academy chief. Yeah, really happy. I think the way everybody's settled back into work, I suppose, especially given given the challenge that the pandemic brings, the way everybody's sort of embraced the different, I suppose, way of working um, to make sure we can get started and, and I suppose get ahead of the game, really, has been really positive. Um, and then the way that the new first years have settled in has been really, really good. Um, and they've really sort of, you've always seemed to be a, already a, a tight-knit group, which is great. Uh, the performances in training have, as you'd expect, gradually improved. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to a really good level and some of the performances um, against some strong some strong teams, strong opposition have been really, really impressive. Yeah, in terms of the first years, does it help that your um, under-18 staff and also your staff as a whole spend so much time linking between the 18s and 16s? Because I would imagine from the outside looking in, a 16 going to an 18 group might take a little, a little while to adjust in terms of what's being expected of them, but mm -hmm. your staff know it's, from it's inside out. That, that transition is really important through each phase, so your 9s to 11s, your 11s into 12s, your 16s into 18s, it's really important that the staff overseeing the next phase, if you like, have got a real awareness of those players. Um, you know, what they're like as, obviously, as young players in terms of their strengths and areas to improve, but just as importantly what they're like as young people, um, you know, and start to develop those relationships which are vital. And certainly at the top end, um, you know, Matty and Simon spend spend a lot of time talking to the coaching staff of those age groups, and, and they're very aware of the players coming coming through. They'll they'll integrate them into sessions where you know when they can. And obviously, some of them are in, in the school at Neen Park Academy, so they can mm. sometimes come out and train with the youth team, which is great. So, so that knowledge is really really important to helping players settle into the next stage of their development. Yeah, in terms of recruitment, is it hard now for a football club because obviously. In the past, you'd have open trial games where you could go have a look at players. Obviously, people get released and get recommended, and you might want to go and watch them in games. Has that become a challenge during the close season because of the situation with COVID? Yeah, to a degree, it has. Um, although, you know, you, our recruitment staff are always looking. You know, some some does a really good job. He's starting to develop a, um, a a good team of some senior scouts and and, and lots of vol volunteers who you know put a lot of time in. You know, on a voluntary basis, certainly in the local area. So that, that's that's very beneficial to us, and, and and I'm sure they're very aware of how important their role is. So obviously, there's not been those sorts of, sorts of games going on, um, but we can catch that up. In terms of the open trials, they have a place, but uh, I sort of targeted um, recruitment when I came in last year and did quite a bit of work with Sam in terms of being more focused in terms of what we were looking for. Certainly going into, into the youth team. We were very aware that we need we were going to need to recruit, um, which sometimes you have to do. Um, too much for my liking in terms of numbers, but um, that, that's another challenge for us in terms of developing more of our own play through a longer part of the system. But some some really focused on um, watching Capri One games, Capri Two games last year, and on the back of that did some excellent work um, and, and the quality of player that we've been able to bring in to that group has. Mm. It's been really pleasing. Before we move on from recruitment, you probably should give yourself a bit of a pat on the back because everyone's talking about Ronnie Edwards as coming into the football club. I know when the chairman spoke, he said, and the manager spoke, that you'd obviously seen him play and, and, and he's someone that was very good at, at a younger level. Do you want to take any of the credit there? <laughs> <laughs> you should. I think, honestly, and it's not playing it down, um, lots of people, when, when, you, when you recruit players, lots of people deserve credit mm. because it, it's, it's rare that it's just a, a, a one-man show, if you like, in terms of recruitment. Everybody has to take, take a bit of credit. You know, in, initially, you know, Barry's contacts and, uh, and knowledge of, of Barnet, um, obviously we saw him play against us probably this sort of time last year, mm. probably a little bit earlier on. So we were aware of him, but Barry was very aware of the situation at Barnet in terms of their academy and Ronnie in particular. And it's so that the, the initial awareness of the situation, if you like, um, and the availability or the potential availability came from Barry. Um, so it then, then comes to me to sort of start talking to um, the club, the player, all those sorts of things, arranging for him to come in and, and train and play in a game. The manager's got to be on board with that as well. So it's a, it's, it's a bit sort of cliche, but it's a team effort, you know, and, and, and that's how we work. And we certainly feel we've got, got ourselves a young young player with huge potential. Let's talk exams. 
because um, obviously players, uh, like any other young person, they have to go through the process, and this year's been a challenge. How have they coped with um, everything that's been thrown at them? Well, the lads that have come in the first years, their, their exam results in the main have been very impressive. Um, one in particular, Lewis Darlington, was outstanding. They're just a sort of set of eights and nines. Um, so, and they started their education with the staff from Neen Park, because obviously they did that as part of their apprenticeship, and they've settled into that very well. They seem to have a good attitude. Um, it was a challenging year, wasn't it? For you know, so far it's been a challenging mm -hmm. year for in so many different ways, and, and education certainly being one. Um, and for the students, it was, it was certainly challenging. And I think they've adapted well to it, and, um, and full credit for that. And as a former teacher, you will know the work that goes on at Neen Park Academy uh, to get them into that position. Absolutely, you know that they, they do they do great work with the kids all year round, and then to to all, all of a sudden, pretty much overnight, to be hit with that challenge, to be able to to get all students really. You know, to, to maintain those relationships, to maintain their learning. They, they did a great, I saw it first hand, mm. and they did a great job with that. Mm. Uh, no doubt about that. Obviously, we talked about recruitment on players. Obviously, we spoke previously about Ryan Semple coming back into the mm. building, and you've had a bit of a, a reshuffle in other areas. Do you feel that is settled now, and you're looking forward to seeing the, the fruits of that? Yeah, absolutely. I've said earlier to you that um, Ryan coming back is a, it's a big one for us, mm. to be fair. It's really, really important. Um, and likewise with, with the reshuffle and, and Bruno now sort of overseeing that, that scholarship programme. It's getting, for me, it's always about getting the right people in the right place um, and uh, I think we're getting there now. Um, you know, obviously we've got this drive and this ambition to, to become you know, a leading Category 2 academy. You know, so, so we've got to keep pushing ourselves and challenging ourselves and, and all the staff know what we're doing really well and they also know what we really need to improve on. And, and that, that push is, is continuous and, uh, and bringing Ryan into, into that role will certainly help us you know, maintain that momentum. First senior appearance on Saturday for Flynn Clark, first yep. senior goal for Flynn Clark on, on Tuesday, you must have been a, like a proud dad. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that, listen, that's, what we, that's what we do the job for, you know, we, to, ultimately there's lots of different su ways success can, can be seen, you know, you, the, the development of young people, positive young people is always a good thing. Seeing um, young people go um, on and achieve things. I mean, we've had two of the lads that didn't get a professional contract last year got placed at Loughborough University. I think that's absolutely outstanding. Mm. Um, and then obviously, then you've got the, the first team appearances, which is, you know, I suppose, what we, we all set out to do, and so the players set out to do. And to see Flynn um, make his debut, and then obviously to make his full debut and score and his full debut in a few minutes. It's, it's great, and his, his performance was outstanding, and he fully deserves it. And, and the gaffer has said he he'd have made his debut last year if it wasn't for his injury. Mm. Um, so he showed a lot of resilience as well to overcome that, and, he, and he's, he's got some real qualities that we really like, and he's, he's got a really good future ahead. I think maybe are we underplaying it as a football club that so many players at the moment have gone through that under nines all the way through to being involved in the first team squad. We spoke about Harrison, we spoke about Flynn, we spoke about Ricky, Sam, Archie, Kyle, yeah. Archie, Brad. I mean, that's eight, that's eight that we've just named off the top, we're yeah. probably missing a few as well. Is that usual? Is that, is that an anomaly? Is, how would you describe it? It's not unusual. Where, 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 where your programme and your club as a whole allows for long -term, for a long-term picture and long-term development, mm -hmm. it's not unusual. Um, where there's a shorter-term view, obviously it becomes more unusual. Um, but it's really important. You know, these, these kids do come into us at seven, eight years old. And, and they have this ambition in their head at such a young age. I want to be a professional footballer, and, and for you know, for quite a few things change. You know, of course I do at a young age. But for us to to have so many players come through such a big chunk of the program, that the entire program actually, it, it it gives me real confidence that over a long period of time, all the staff and such a wide number of staff that have worked with these young players, they've done a great job because first and foremost, they've carried on enjoying football. And then they've developed as young footballers, developed the right qualities as young people. Um, and then they, what they do have now is a, a real deep affinity for the football club and, and its values and the way they work. And I think that's really important that you, you, you have that within your group. You always recruit from outside, there'll always be small, you know, small numbers, hopefully, of players coming from outside. But if you've got a core number of players with a deep affinity um, and a knowledge of the values of the club, I think it's really important.